Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I'd like to talk about capacitors, energy, and dielectrics. Our objectives are going to be to relate the stored charge, voltage, and stored energy for a capacitor, to derive and apply expressions for the energy stored in the parallel plate capacitor, and finally to describe how insertion of a dielectric between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor affects its capacitance. So let's start by talking about the energy stored in the capacitor. Work is done in charging a capacitor. That's what allows it to store energy. If you consider two uncharged conductors in close proximity, the potential difference in moving some amount of charge Q from the negative to the positive plate must be Q over C. Moving more charge increases the potential, therefore the electric potential energy of the charge and the capacitor must also increase. So let's use that to find the energy stored in a capacitor. The potential energy stored in a capacitor is going to be the integral as we start from no charge all the way up to our total charge Q of Q over C, the work done in taking that charge from one plate to the other, of course, over our little tiny bit of charge dQ. So we're going to break that up from Q equals zero all the way to our maximum capital Q. Well, the capacitance is set. That's a constant. So this will be one over the capacitance integral from Q equals zero to capital Q of Q dQ. That's a pretty straightforward integral. So that becomes one over C. We get Q squared over two evaluated from zero to capital Q, which becomes one half Q squared over C. But if you recall, C equals Q over V. So since C equals Q over V, this becomes one half Q squared over C, which is Q over V, or I end up with one half Q V. But if I take that a little bit further, we also know, again, C equals Q over V, so Q must be equal to CV. So that becomes one half. We're going to replace Q with CV times V or one half CV squared. So we have two equations we can use for the potential energy stored in a capacitor. One half CV squared and one half QV works just as well also. So energy stored in a capacitor. Well, we could also talk about field energy density. If we consider a parallel plate capacitor of plate area A and some separation D, we can think of the energy stored in the capacitor as the work required to create the electric field between those two plates. Therefore, a capacitor stores energy by creating an electric field. The amount of energy stored as electric field per unit volume between the plates is known as the field energy density, which we're going to write as UE. So if we wanted to derive this a little bit further, U equals one half CV squared. We just proved that. But we also know that C equals epsilon zero A over D. And if the electric field is the potential difference divided by the distance d, then we could just say the potential is ed. With the couple substitutions here then, u is going to be equal to 1 half c is epsilon naught a over d. And v squared is just going to be e squared d squared. All right, well, we can do a little bit of simplification here. I've got a D squared will go away there. And say that U equals one half epsilon naught A E squared D. But AD, A times D, that's the volume of the area where we're making our electric field. That's the volume between the capacitor plates. Right there, A times D is volume, so this implies then, since AD equals our volume, we could then write that U 
divided by AD or divided by our volume must be equal to 1 half epsilon naught E squared. And by the way, the energy stored per volume, that is our field energy density, or UE. So we've determined an expression for the energy density between the plates of the capacitor as stored in that electric field. Dielectrics are insulating materials which are placed between the plates of a capacitor to increase the device's capacitance. When a dielectric is placed between the plates of a capacitor, the electric field between the plates is weakened. Now, this is due to the molecules of the dielectric becoming polarized in the electric field created by the potential difference of the capacitor plates. So you get an opposing electric field. What's that look like? Well, let's assume that we have some electric field due to the capacitor plates. Now, if we were to go look at a molecule in that electric field, it has a cloud of electrons surrounding it, which you can think of for now as orbits. Well, in an electric field, those charges want to line up with the electric field. So the electrons want to spend a little bit more time over here to the left of the molecule and a little less time over here. So what you create as a net effect is a polarization of the molecule, where if the electrons spend a little more time over here, you get a little bit more negative here, a little more positive here. Notice, though, positive negative, you've set up an induced electric field in the opposite direction that opposes that main electric field. The greater the amount of polarization, the greater the reduction in the electric field, of course. Therefore, for a fixed charge on the plates, Q, the voltage decreases, so you increase the capacitance since C equals Q over V. V gets smaller, C gets larger. That's the effect of a dielectric. Now, if we want to talk about the dielectric constant, the amount by which the capacitance is increased when a dielectric is induced is quantified as the dielectric constant, typically written as kappa K. This constant also corresponds to the amount of the electric field, the amount the electric field strength is reduced between those plates when you put the dielectric in between the plates. The more the molecules or atoms of the dielectric are polarized, the greater the dielectric constant. So capacitance is going to be kappa epsilon zero A over D, if we want to start talking about things other than air gap or vacuum gap capacitors, where epsilon, our permittivity is going to be our dielectric constant times the permittivity of free space. Epsilon equals kappa epsilon naught. So we could write more generally capacitance equals epsilon A over D. That becomes epsilon zero when you're talking about an air gap or vacuum gap capacitor because that's the permittivity of free space. The dielectric constant is one. For other dielectrics inserted, you just replace epsilon with kappa times epsilon naught. The net electric field then is going to be the electric field that you had without the dielectric divided by that constant. So once again, you could say that the permittivity of the dielectric, epsilon, is kappa epsilon naught. Use that in all of your previous equations where we'd been using epsilon naught, and now you can take into account dielectrics. Let's finish up by talking about capacitors in series and capacitors in parallel. When you have capacitors in series, they must have the same charge because each plate must obtain charge from the next plate because of the law of conservation of charge. How's that look? Well, let's start off by drawing a little diagram. Here's our first capacitor. We will put another capacitor in series with it and hook them up to some potential difference, delta V. All right, if this is capacitor one and this is capacitor two, we must have a charge plus Q here and minus Q here. Where did that minus Q come from? Well, it must be separation of charge. So you've got plus Q here and minus Q here. 
So you've got the same charge separation because of conservation of charge. If we call this V1 and V2, we can find that the equivalent capacitance must be equal to the total charge divided by the voltage, which is going to be Q divided by V1 plus V2. Well, that's going to be Q over, if remember C equals Q over V, V equals Q over C, that'll be Q over C1 plus Q over C2, replacing V1 with Q over C1, and so on. Which, a little bit of algebra, algebra becomes 1 over 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. This implies then that 1 over the equivalent capacitance must be equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus however, keep doing that for however many capacitors you happen to have. So that's how we find the equivalent capacitance for capacitors in series. For capacitors in parallel, we have a slightly different situation. Let's draw a circuit here where we've got a capacitor here. And let's put it in parallel with another capacitor. We'll again have a potential difference across them. We'll call this C1. There's C2. Now, capacitors in parallel must have the same voltage across them because of conservation of energy. So when we go to analyze this situation, our equivalent capacitance, C equals charge divided by voltage. In this case, the charge is going to be, well, we've got charge Q1 here, charge Q2 there. So this will be Q1 plus Q2. And they have the same voltage, so that's divided by V, which is going to be Q1 over V plus Q2 over V, which, easily enough, C equals Q over V, that's going to be C1 plus C2, which allows us then to say that the equivalent capacitance for capacitors in parallel, you just add them up. C1 plus C2 and so on for as many capacitors as you happen to have in parallel. So the equivalent capacitance for capacitors in parallel. Hopefully that gets you a good start on capacitors, stored energy, and dielectrics. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.